Go. I have a friend who sometimes uh, crashes here. He's sort of a party boy, out late, gets drunk too often. But, you know, I put up, I put up with this friend because I've known him for a long time. And he tends to pick up things and drag things home. So maybe three or four days ago, this backpack appeared. Now, I knew that he had some stuff at a friend's house. Some of his really, you know, it's a nice looking bag, a new bag. I said, what's that bag? I said, did you go and pick up your stuff that you had stored at that friend's house? No. I said, well, whose bag is it? He said, I don't know. I said, is it Mike, this fellow named Michael who stays here sometimes? I said, is it Michael's bag? I don't know, I don't care. You can have it. So, you can have it. So I thought, well, what is in the bag? Well, I opened the bag. Now, this bag has now been repacked mostly. But I opened the bag. The first thing I opened, I opened the bag, and I saw a food container mashed up with a silver foil on it. And I opened the bag. I mean, I opened the, the bag and smelled it. I think it was, this blue, it was a blue bag, I think. Oh, you could tell it was rotten food. So I ran that out to the dumpster and put it down. So then I said, I was talking to another friend. I said, where could he have gotten that bag? You think he stole it from a homeless person? So I began to look through the bag. Now, it wasn't in this order. I put these things in different, I put these things in my own bag. So I took them out because I was looking. There were all these things, look here. Brand new gloves, two pairs of gloves, cap, there, this is a gloves, gloves, and tie, nice tie, and wash rags. There's even a emergency blanket sole, maintains 92%. Now one of the things that was in here, the theory was, a friend of mine, we had the theory, that it was a homeless person's bag. And when I found the food, and then in one compartment, it was a lot of vinyl gloves. I mean, it looked like the guy was either homophobia or something. I threw those away, and there were about 50 common. I think maybe this is a guy that went out among and did, you know, volunteer work, helping the homeless, you know, giving out condoms, telling people to practice safe sex. And there was even, what is this? This is a rain poncho. Then I found among other things. Oh, also, there were two high-tech, extra-large men's thermal underwear. Two of those, and I found a receipt. I found a receipt that showed that he had paid like $20, and then there's a one, one umbrella. This is starting to look less and less like a homeless person's bag, right? Another umbrella. Oh, some new socks, new socks. And then I found this Models bag you see there. And I found a receipt which said he had paid, I don't know, 20 or $30 for the bag. The receipt came to like 40 or $40. I looked at the receipt and I said, well, maybe, but he paid cash. So none of the stuff, so none of the stuff at cash sale, I said, I had the receipt. I actually put it on top of some stuff. And I said, maybe the people at the Lodell or wherever it was that he bought it at, it was General Square. So I went into the, I started going in other compartments. Well, I went to this top one here. This, this made the mystery even more. I opened this up. Oh, not this one. Where is it? There's one here. Anyway, maybe it's this one. No. It's the very top one here. This must be it. Yeah. No. No, that's the main bag. Maybe it's this one here. Yes, this one here. Now look at this. There's, this start, now it's starting to look like a homeless person. There's a uh, Tide, there's some Q-tips, and look at all these Metro cards. I mean, how many Metro cards? I mean, there are hundreds of Metro cards here with some pens, and I may began thinking, of, well, you know, homeless people sometimes go and pick up but anybody that would be would picking up this many metro cards 
Well, you see how many there are? Doesn't seem to me that that would be a person that would have forty dollars to go out and buy a new bag, and to buy and the, I had the receipt, so I said, and there isn't any indication anywhere of this person's identity. You know, I thought, wow, this is really weird. And then there were some a lot of vinyl gloves like the kind you use. Maybe the guy was phobic about the flu, or maybe he works at a hospital. I threw those out. There were soap bars that looked like you might have got mashed up on stuff. I cleaned up a lot of stuff and I ended up with a bag of what you call personal hygiene items, the kind they give out at homeless shelters. So I said, well, maybe this guy carries, maybe, maybe he is homeless or maybe he's carrying these home, maybe he goes out and works among the homeless and he has this bag to give people so they have, you know, underarm deodorant, toothpaste and all that. That, there was a bar of soap all mashed up on that. I washed it all off. I had that somewhere in a bag. I can't show you that bag. But then I continued exploring, and I went up here in the corner bag. This was, this was the jackpot. This was the jackpot. I started going through here. At the time, it was a mess. But let me show you what I found here. First, we'll keep the, keep the big surprise to last. First, I found it was all this money. All this money. But what kind of money is it? Where's my glass? Where are my glasses? Hopefully these will work. So this money, this wonderful money here. Now, who would walk around with that much? Who would walk around? You can, you can turn the thing to follow it. Who would walk around with all this, all these pens? Look, that says uh, Queen of England, Elizabeth. And on the back, I don't know what it says. Ten pence. And here's another one, 10, I guess more 10, 10 pence. I thought some of these, what, well, this looks like a 50, it looks like it's Japanese, it looks like a 50, you know, and here's a coin, it's also Japanese, 50, 2003, 50. I don't know what that is, maybe it's a coin collection, I don't know. Really strangely here, here we have D.B. Regina, 2016 Elizabeth. Oh, thank you for picking up that American penny. And then mixed in with all this stuff, there's one I dropped. Ah, I want to make sure. That. So anyway, so I had all this coinage. I said, my, there might be, I don't know how many, there could be, there could be, uh, there could be I don't know because it's all foreign coins, but if I ever go to England or Japan, I always thought we should collect coins like this to get, feed the poor when you leave the airport because we all have a jar of odd coins that we've got in different countries. So I went down digger, I found a few, only a few American coins. And then on top of that, I found, very interestingly, I found a key. I found a little teeny clip of some sort, and then I found a key. And the key, like, you know, that looks like it could be a key to a bike lock, you know. I thought, well, this person has a key to something. Maybe he has a locker somewhere, or maybe he has a bike he rides. So that was that was sort of part of the thrill, right? So so far, then, then what do I find? What do I find? I find a small gold ring. Now, I don't know, but this is gold. I won't tell you what the design is. Is actually, I'll tell you what this is. It's bent out of shape. I don't know if you can see that. It's gold. It was all dirty inside, so I used polish, so I went to look for a marking. This is incredible. I found all this new clothing, a brand new backpack, and the only thing I had was a receipt. For that was a cash receipt. So I said, well, it's good that I took the trouble to look through this bag. You know, so finally, I hard quizzed my person. Where did you get the bag? I have to know. I found money, I found important things in that bag. And he said to me, I was on the path, the path, path came into Hoboken, at the end of the line. You know, I guess train out of service maybe, I don't know. It was late at night. And he said the bag was sitting there sitting there, and the car was empty, so I just picked it up. And I told him, I said, you know, it could have had a bomb in it. I don't think that's likely, but you know. Uh, so he just picked it up. Great for him. 
So here I am with this bag, and now I feel, I said, whoa, on the one hand, I mean, there were some raisins, I threw away some tissues, and then I said, this is fantastic, a new bag, clothes, thermal, thermal stuff, and no ID. I thought, but I don't want to go down to the pass station and say I found this bag with money and a gold ring in it, because I have a feeling it would never, if someone reported missing a bag, somebody with little sticky fingers would grab the coins and the gold ring or they would never never get it to the person, right? Besides, what are the chances that this was, the, the receipt went for a Friday before, so it was about five days old. I didn't look at it for the first two or three days. So finally, see the bag has some, there's a compartment here, a compartment here, there's a, a compartment here, there's a compartment here, there's a compartment here. Oh, there's a wheel and some stuff down here. There were some tissues. And I don't know where I was, but I mean, I said, wow, this is great, fantastic. And I don't know how, but all of a sudden I said, what's this? And so I opened this. And I couldn't believe it. Now, this is a day after I've done all this other cleaning and hunting and I took the receipt. I thought maybe I should go to the Models and see if they remember the guy that bought it. You know, I, I really I really feel sorry for this person, all this English money. I don't know, I thought maybe it's a tourist. You know, who knows? Well, lo and behold, I put it all in this thing, if you can believe it. Not only did I have ID, I won't show you the name, but I, I have a W-2 earnings statement, a W-2 form with his name and address on it. I have, you know, cash. I have cash things, whatever. I have a New York City Transit envelope. I guess you mail in a card to get it, get it refunded when it's not used. And I have, I have all this stuff. So now I have his name, his social security number, Samsung Galaxy Nook. Anyway, so I have all this stuff. So now, just when I thought I had a pile of English money, Japanese money, just when I thought I had a beautiful little gold ring with little, three little things on it, I really thought I, I found this the day after I'd done all this other, all this other detective work. And I said, what should I do? I thought, I don't want to call the pass because they might be on my case. I'm going to say, oh, you'll get in trouble calling the pass saying that somebody picked up a bag and brought it to your house. So I was thinking, well, maybe I'll go down and say, what do you do when you have a bag to a friend, this, this kind of drink too much friend brought this bag home? Well, what I did actually is I enlisted the help of a friend in Brooklyn. And uh, I'm pretty sure by the name, boy's only 19 years old, born 1999. And uh, he worked as a messenger. $22,000 a year as a messenger means he is on layabout. The name sounds awfully African-American. He had lots of pictures of girls and stuff, so I assume he's heterosexual. But I just want you to know, the reason I'm wearing this Randy Wicker hat, so whenever you go out, you go out somewhere, you have some bad luck, I'll pack it up later. You know, you just run ahead, you, you should just say to yourself, God, I can't believe I lost my bag, can't believe I lost my purse. I can't believe I left that, whatever, you know, somewhere. And you can just say to yourself, I sure hope that somebody like that Randy Wicker or Marshby Johnson would find that bag, because now this man's gonna get all this stuff back. And people, I've done maybe two hours of work cleaning stuff up, putting people and putting stuff in bags, sorting through it until I finally found the, and it is funny. Of all the, the, the one that was the hardest to find was the one that's at the very back. I mean, this, that, who would ever, I didn't even see this here. See, because I went in here, this was like the top. That's where all the cards are. And then I went in, this is one, and then there's other here. I don't have the tall sheet. I have them somewhere, but they're not important. The important stuff is here. So anyway, so I guess there's several morals to the story. Number one, <laughs> Of course, I wouldn't. Don't pick up a bag that's left on the path. Because first off, it, the path, it was the out of service. They would come through, they'd collect the bag. I would think, I wonder though, this, this was hidden so well. 
Maybe he bought it for that reason. Because, I mean, I had the bag for two days before I finally unthrowed that last compartment that had everything in it. And I have some people who live in Brooklyn, live out there in, in, in uh, the area. I don't know where. He has an address. He has his, his employer's number. I have tickets. There were tickets where he went by Peter Pan airline tickets. So here's somebody who's working hard for a living, you know, and maybe doing volunteer work as well. And uh, he's going to get his bag back. So this is Randy Wicker reporting. Thank you for watching.